Hi, my name is Sasha. Welcome back to my channel, Sash Reads, and this is my August wrap up. So, I've got my handy dandy notebook here that tells me everything I read. So, I read 11 bucks. 11 bucks. So I read 11 books. I read 3,780 pages. Three of them were five stars. Five of them were four stars. Two of them were three stars. And one of them was a two star. I listened to two audiobooks. I read four books from Kindle Unlimited. Two books I read physically. And three books were ebooks. I read two books from Authors of Color. My favorite read of the month was The Dead Romantics. The worst read of the month was Can't Resist Her. The first book I actually finished in August, I read most, well, listened to most of it in July, and that was The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This was a reread for me, and it was another five stars. I love Evelyn Hugo. I love how messy she is, how she is not a good person, and just reading about her life again, it was just, it was nostalgic for me, even though, I don't know, I think I only read about two or three years ago. Love this, love the audiobook and I'm definitely keen for the, I, I think it's a movie. The movie is coming out for this. It's a show for Daisy Jones, which I really think it should be vice versa. I think this should be a show and every episode focus on one husband. Um, and I think Daisy Jones should be a movie, but that's just my opinion. That's my opinion! I then read an arc for A Recipe for Family by Tori Hushka. It was actually a four star read for me. I picked it up on a whim. I think I saw it and I'm like, that sounds interesting. It also was something that I thought Sean from Shani and Books might like. Uh, so it's a literary fiction about this mum who, she's not a single mum, she is married, but her husband is away a lot for work and so she's just needing a bit of help around the house because her stepdaughter is a teenager and she's got a four-year-old daughter as well um so one of her friends from mum group was like you should hire an au pair au pair au pair i don't know how to say it and so she does and so it focuses on the mum there's also the au pair's perspective and she's actually from america and her cousin is an au pair in Australia. And he's like, hey, you should become an au pair. It's good money. And it's, um, you just need to look after the kids, basically. So she comes over because she's got nothing else to do because her mum has died and her dad is a bit of a deadbeat. So she's not going to go to college. Um, so she's like, all right, I'll become an au pair over in Australia. And then also focuses on the mum's mother-in-law is a perspective as well and so you've got the three different perspectives the mother-in-law the mum and the au pair and it's really funny the way they entwined it gave me big little lies vibes obviously wasn't as good as that book but still uh i yeah it was messy it had some good points like i related a lot to the mum character because i too am a mum of a four-year-old there was some disagreements between like the mum the mother-in-law and the au pair and when you're reading from both sides like you didn't know which side to pick because both of them had like really good points but yeah i really enjoyed it and definitely if you liked big little lies pick it up it's a big W for like 16 bucks. It's a, it's a good book. I gave it four stars. I started reading Ruthless Fate by Carolyn Packham and Susanna Valenti. This is the second book in the Zodiac Academy. Actually, I have it right here. Right here. Um, but I realized I should probably be reading the novella that was set before the first book, um, which was called Origins of an Academy Bully. And that's got the perspective of Darius and... What's the teacher's name? Whatever the teacher's name is. It's why those two are so like buddy buddy. In the first book, like you find out why and what happened between them. Um, because it's set five years before the first book. So reading about that, um, it kind of helped me understand the first book. And then yes, I read Ruthless Faye. So I gave Origins of Academy Buddy three stars. So I gave Ruthless Faye four stars. Uh, definitely uh, better than the first one. I definitely, I probably am going to give the next one five stars if 
the trend continues. Um, so yeah, this follows on from the first book. There's still more bullying in this one, um, but you can see the love interests start to grow between Blue and the teacher. See, I can't even remember. Darcy? Um, and then Tori is um, having a good time, basically. She's messy, and I like that. But I think Darcy is probably my favourite twin, but we shall see how we go from there. I'm keen to see what their, like, faction... What's it called? It's not faction. Like, whatever their thing is like you know, like Darius is a dragon and Caleb's a vampire like I'm, I'm excited to see what that is definitely a good time and yeah if you gave the first one three stars you I think you might like the second one or like give the second one a go and then DNF the series but if you like the second one then keep going this was also a gift from my lovely friend Asha over on Instagram Ash Reads so thank you so much again for this one and she gave me the reckoning as well I then read The Beast by Katie Robert this is the fourth book in her Wicked Villain series and it focuses on the Beast Gaston and Belle they've changed Gaston to Gaton um, and they call Belle, they call her Isabel or Izzy. Oh, I really enjoyed the angst between the Beast and Gaston. Like, you could tell they were trying not to like it. Like, the start of the book, they've both left um, Belle's territory because her dad was, like, the leader. And they were both, like, generals for him. But they both left him because um, Isabel couldn't choose between them. Um, but you could tell that they either wanted to fuck each other or they wanted to kill each other. Um, and anyway, they ended up fucking and it was beautiful. It was glorious. I really enjoyed that thruple. That was, um, that one was still only a four stars, um, because Tink and Hook has my heart. Belle, Beast and Gaston is definitely the next one up there for me. Then I read Sacrifice by Katie Robert because I was um, in the middle of Jan, uh, I was right at the end of Jan's um, Full Moon Book Club uh, readathon, Full Moon readathon, and I wanted to get one more character card. So I read Sacrifice, which is a vampire uh, reverse harem. Or maybe it might be Polly because two of the guys kind of got it on too. Um, and that's, so it's the first book in the Court of a Vampire Queen that is coming out in like a bind up. You'll be seeing it everywhere. What did I give it? I gave it four stars. I mean, it's a nice little smutty novella with some vampires, really. I liked the supernatural, like the magical elements of it, and I'm keen to see where that goes in the next one. Um, but yeah, not much to talk about it. Um, it's just pretty much like full straight in your face, like sex, like orgasmic vampire bites. Basically. That's all I really need to say, hey? I then read a, another arc. Thank you so much, Harlequin, for sending this to me. And that was The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston. I did tab it up. I don't know if you could see that. Look at all those tabs. I do have a vlog. I just haven't edited it yet, so bear with me. I love this book. Five out of five stars. This is the romance of the summer if you're in the US or Northern Hemisphere. What can I say about it? Do I remember any of it? Probably not. Okay, so it's about Florence, who is a ghostwriter for this really popular romance author. Um, she gets a new editor. She kind of needs some help. Well, she's having trouble writing the last book of her contract. So she asked the editor for um, some an extension, and the editor goes, no. Anyway, that night, she goes out drinking with her bestie, and she kind of kisses the editor. Then she gets a phone call that there's been a tragedy at home, so she rushes off home. Doesn't matter, like, doesn't care about the book or anything. Anyway, one funny thing about Florence is that she can see ghosts, right? And while she's at home, she has a, like a knock on the funeral home because her family owns the funeral home business. And it's her editor. But her editor is a ghost. So um, this is about them trying to figure out um, how to get uh, Ben to walk, well Benji, to like follow the light. Um, it's also about the romance between them. But it's not just a romance. It's also a 
contemporary where like Florence is trying to find herself. Um, something happened when she was younger and she's been like the laughing stock of the town. So that's why she's never come home to visit for so long. And now that her dad's died, like she's having all these like um, thoughts and feelings come up where like in regrets. There's this one like subplot where her dad has left a bunch of errands for them to do for his funeral and so she takes them all on and I I loved that. Yes, I really enjoyed it. Um the purple tabs is something that I like related to. Oh like this one which I was like holy crap that's me. I hated that I cried when I was angry or upset or annoyed. I hated that I cried at the slightest flux of emotional nuance. Like that's me. I'm an emotional like mess and I cry basically anything but you're the big sister right you've always been really good at pushing through whatever feelings you have and getting things done like just because she's the oldest she's like I'll do it by myself you guys need help and so yes um lots of like family like moments like that was the five stars that was my favorite of the um month so after the dead romantics I then had a buddy read with a subscriber so thank you so much for reaching out to me Gatolino, Gatolino. I've never asked how you say your name. I'm so sorry. Uh, but yeah, she, she follows me on Instagram and follows me here on YouTube. And she reached out and she saw that I was reading only a monster this month. And she's like, do you want a buddy read? So yeah, um, this was not the book that you saw on my TBR. I love the book. I gave it four stars, but I saw this bookish box version and I'm like, I need that purple. So I grabbed it off Facebook Marketplace. What's it? Oh no, the Facebook page. I was like, yo, I need the bookish box, only monster. And someone's like, I have it right here. So here we go. Um, so this is about Joan who um she's just hanging out at her grandma's for the summer. And her her whole family on her mum's side has been a bit weird. Her mum has unfortunately passed away and her dad is on a business trip. Or is he going to visit family in the Vietnam? Um, and her mum is English. So she's hanging out with her um, mum's side of the family and they've always been a little bit weird um, and her grandma has already told her that she has always told her that she's a monster and that they're the bad guys. She never really believed it until one day she time travels and she's like what? So she goes home and her grandma's like waiting for her and she like, always knew this day was gonna happen been written in time basically and so the reason why she time traveled is because she touched this guy's neck by accident and so the way that they can time travel is they have to take life from another person and that's the, the amount of life they take is the amount of time they time travel. Um, so she took like a whole like 12 hours from that person. And that's why they say they're monsters. She's trying to come to terms with that. Um, and then the boy that she likes at her um, new job is actually a monster hunter. So there's that. So yeah, it's about her trying to run away from that boy. Um, and while she's, she's, someone's trying to help. Uh, and then um, she meets someone and like another time, like another monster, and so she, he's trying to help her go back in time to like meet, like to meet her grandma to like warn her about something. Um, so I yes, really enjoyed it. Definitely keen for the next one. I'm really excited for reading more by Vanessa Len, even if it's not in this world, because I really enjoyed the writing. And yes, look at those red edges. How gorgeous! I then read Mercy by Sarah Kate. It came out on the 25th of August and I read and I finished it on the 25th of August. I did nothing else that day. So this is the fourth book in the Salacious Players Club series where it focuses on the four different owners of the kink club called the Salacious Players Club. This la this is not the last one actually. She lets us know that there's a fifth and sixth book going to come out. Anyway, the fourth book is about Maggie who's the only female owner of the club and um, about her coming to terms with she is not as vanilla as she might think she is. Um, she is actually a dom. Comes to terms also with falling for her best friend's son who is the ex-boyfriend of the first book's female main character. Yes, quite messy but it was really good. I really enjoyed it. Um, I gave it five stars because 
those books just kept getting better and better. Like there are some scenes in this book that I was like, oh, that was amazing. Not just the sexy scenes, but also the in-depth, like the deep and meaningful scenes as well. That could be taken differently. Anyway, I then read the worst book of the month and that was Can't Resist Her by... It doesn't say. Why do I not have that here? Oh, Kiana Alexander. Um, it took me like two and a half months to read this book. Um, it is a sapphic novel um, about um, the one that got away, basically. So it's like 20, not 20 years later, probably about maybe 10, 15 years later. Um, and the main character has come back to her hometown where she went to school um and her school she went with so school she went to her grandmother actually opened it but they're demolishing it and they're putting a new building there for something um and she's cutting upset about it and so the one that got away is actually the main architect of that building demolition um, and so they kind of get together even though they're on opposite sides and I, I just didn't like the writing. I just like the romance was eh, like Like it took me so long to finish it. I was I just didn't want to but I knew I had to like usually I DNF But I don't know why I didn't DNF this one and then the last book of the month was The Beholder by Anna Bright. This is a YA fantasy romance um, about this girl, Sila. Basically, her dad's sick and her stepmom is a bitch and has organized Sila to... Like, Sila has to, like, try and marry to become the seneschal of the island or whatever she is from. When she tells her dad she wants to marry this guy, then, like, at the full, like, the big, like, ceremony whatever the dark guy rejects her um and i'm like well why don't you ask him and tell him about it beforehand like you've known each other since you were like kids like that does that through me and then so um her stepmom goes okay well i've organized this tour for you to go and court four guys from the different parts of the world that's how you can become seneschal or whatever yeah basically about her and trying to find romance to find her worth i gave it three stars a three yeah i don't know it might have been a four but it's a three stars now <sighs> I just didn't really care to be honest and yeah I'm like I'm glad I've read it now so I can take it off my shelves anyway I am getting a headache now so I'm gonna leave that there uh thank you so much for watching uh if you read any of those books let me know down below what you thought about them do you think the same as me do you think I'm wrong please let me know uh don't forget you can like comment and subscribe if you want to see more from me if you also want to be my friend you can add me on goodreads instagram and twitter they're all at sash reads i hope you have a wonderful wonderful rest of your day i'll see you next time bye